Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Amazing World, a glimpse into our bright future. My name is Luna, and today I'll take you on a journey far beyond the boundaries of our solar system, to a place that might one day become our second home. When we imagine leaving Earth behind, our thoughts often turn to Mars, red, cold, and lifeless, yet tantalizingly close. It's our planetary neighbor, just a few months away with today's rockets. Mars feels like the next logical step in human exploration. And perhaps it is. But if we dream of a true second home, one with the potential to replace Earth itself, we may have to look a little further. Beyond the edges of our solar system lies a silent, glimmering star, Proxima Centauri. It's part of the Alpha Centauri system and just 4.24 light years away, the closest star to our sun. And orbiting that star, is a planet known as Proxima Centauri b, one of the most intriguing discoveries in the history of astronomy. Why is this planet so fascinating? Because it is rocky, Earth-sized, and located within the habitable zone of its star, the region where liquid water could exist. It's not a gas giant or a frozen wasteland. It is, by all current data, the nearest potentially Earth-like planet we know. Of course, Earth-like does not mean Earth identical. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star, cooler and smaller than our sun, but prone to violent solar flares. We don't yet know if Proxima b has a stable atmosphere or if those flares have stripped it away, but the fact that it even lies within the right zone for life makes it a candidate worth watching and perhaps one day visiting. But let's pause for a moment. Just how far is 424 light years really? With current propulsion technology, such as those used on spacecraft like Voyager or New Horizons, a trip to Proxima Centauri b would take over 75,000 years. Even the fastest spacecraft ever built, powered by chemical rockets, wouldn't get us there in any meaningful human time frame. So, is it impossible? Not quite. Because science is already looking ahead. One of the most exciting concepts is called Breakthrough Starshot, a real-world initiative backed by scientists and thinkers like Stephen Hawking and Yuri Milner. The idea, send ultra-lightweight probes attached to tiny light sails, pushed by powerful lasers from Earth. These probes could theoretically reach 20% of the speed of light, making the journey in just 20 years. But these are robotic missions, not crewed. For humans, we need something far more ambitious. Enter the world of next-generation propulsion. Nuclear fusion drives, similar in concept to the energy of the stars, could one day propel spacecraft faster and more efficiently than ever imagined. Projects like the direct fusion drive are already being tested on a small scale. Antimatter propulsion, using the most energy-dense substance in the universe, exists only in theory today, but could reduce travel times to decades or even years. Warp drives, bending space itself to shorten the distance, remain speculative, but are being studied by serious physicists like Miguel Alcubierre and NASA's EagleWorks team. If even one of these technologies becomes viable in the next hundred years, the journey to Proxima Centauri b could move from fantasy to plan. But time is still a problem. Even with advanced propulsion, we're still likely talking about decades in space, far longer than any human has ever traveled. And that brings us to another fascinating and very human idea, cryogenic sleep. The concept of suspending biological functions to survive long-duration space travel has been around for decades in fiction. But today, it's creeping into the real world. Researchers are exploring therapeutic hypothermia, metabolic slowdown, and induced hibernation. If we learn how to safely pause the human body for months or even years, deep space travel becomes much more realistic. Still, this topic deserves its own episode because the implications are enormous. For now, let's just say, cryogenic sleep might be one of the keys to reaching distant stars with living crews. But let's imagine that we've made it. That humanity has built a ship capable of carrying people across interstellar space, either awake or sleeping. That after years, maybe decades, we arrive at Proxima Centauri b. What would we find? Perhaps a barren but stable world, waiting for life to begin. Or perhaps a dynamic living planet with its own climate, its own seasons, and its own beauty. The first settlers would face unimaginable challenges. Building habitats, creating food sources, 
shielding themselves from radiation, generating oxygen and water, adapting to alien gravity and light. But we are an adaptable species. We've survived ice ages, deserts, and endless challenges here on Earth, and we would do so again. Over time, our colony could grow from a scientific outpost to a thriving settlement. Children born under a distant sun, new cultures formed, new art, new languages, inspired by the alien skies above. And through it all, Earth would not be forgotten. Proxima B would not replace our home, but extend it, a second branch of the human family tree, reaching out into the stars. Because in the end, the dream of interstellar life is not just about survival, it's about becoming more. About reaching out, not in fear, but in curiosity, in wonder, and in hope. Proxima Centauri B is not just a dot in the sky, it is a promise. A quiet whisper across the void asking, are you ready to come closer? And someday, perhaps in a hundred years, perhaps in five hundred, we will answer.